Hello everyone. It is March and time for my January and February collection videos. I'm saying videos because uh, I'm not going to do an intro like I did for the last thing, but uh, I think because of the amount of time that I go between doing videos, I think instead of just having one like hour and a half long video like the one, uh, the book previous one, uh, I'm going to split it up like I did the six month collection video uh, series. I just feel like that way everybody can watch what they want to watch and that's it. And that everything's individually organized by its section and all that. Uh, I just figured that would be easier. Yeah, it's a little bit more work all at once, but it's whatever. I don't care. Plus, I can technically release more videos a month. But uh, I did get everything but posters and wall scrolls this month. So there will be a little bit of everything else. This first video here is going to be the CDs that I've gotten the last two months. So Crystal won't be a part of this one. The other two, the DVDs, Blu-rays, and the video games videos, she will be a part of, though. So the first part, CDs, this one's all me. So sit back, because there's quite a few here. We'll go ahead and start off with a couple of soundtracks, actually, that I found at separate times at a our local Goodwill, one of our local Goodwills. First one here is actually the Little Mermaid soundtrack. I've mentioned multiple times that I want a bunch of the Disney soundtracks, so... This was really cool to have. Um, obviously, you know, classics such as uh, Part of Your World, Under the Sea, Poor Unfortunate Souls, and Kiss the Girl. Uh, plus, there's some cool instrumental, like, orchestrated stuff on here. Uh, this was probably the one I was least trying to find, but it was, like, $2, so I just bought it. And then, at a later date, I went back and found the Lion King soundtrack. Another one I wasn't really looking forward to, uh, or wasn't really looking too hard to get. Uh, it was probably these two, honestly, but there's only like two or three more that I really want now. So, really cool to have these two at least. Uh, you know, Lion King has Circle of Life, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, um, Just Can't Wait to Be King, Hokuna Matata, Be Prepared, all that stuff. Really cool to have both of these, though, actually. Two more Disney soundtracks off the list. I think it's just really Mulan and uh, for classic stuff, and then I think I have Moana on there as well. So, uh, really cool. I'm, I'm really, really happy to have these. Then we go on to our, I guess you could call it, I usually call this the classic metal slash rock section, but there's a couple CDs in here that aren't necessarily classic. It's more the not prog and it's the not normal genres of music that I listen to, kind of. Like the, the... Not my general big section that I do every month. There's actually a few of these, because we went to, um... Uh, I know I've mentioned, I think it was in the last video, the closing CD, like, used DVD and CD store that closed recently in this area. Well, uh, there's a couple other ones that are still open in this general area, and we actually went to one in February, and I got a bunch of stuff there. And then, uh, I'll give you a little bit of a future update, but we went to the other one this month, so there'll be some more in the next one. But we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and start actually with some Guitar Shred albums, I guess you'd say. We'll start off with, uh, this is, uh, an, I have a hard time pronouncing this guy's name. Ingve or Ingwe Malmsteen, a uh, very influential, like, neoclassical guitarist. This is just like a best of, uh, from 91 of his. Uh, I just figured I didn't really need any CDs of his because I didn't really know a lot about him. I like knew he's super influential with guitars and stuff, and to a lot of guitarists. But I didn't really... There wasn't any like albums I knew of of his. I've, I've learned of a couple since, but this, this has like the best stuff from those albums, so it doesn't really matter. Like I said, this is a Greatest Hits album, um, but songs on here I actually enjoyed... Uh, we have the first track here, Black Star, is a really cool instrumental. And actually, I think the first two albums of his, Jeff Scott Soto sang for. Uh, he's a pretty... He's played Prog Power twice with two different bands, so pretty cool, considering that's from, like, the early 80s. Okay, let's see what else in here. Uh, I Don't... You Don't Remember, I'll Never Forget is pretty good as well, the, the fourth track on there. And then Hold On, track seven, Heaven Tonight, track eight, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it on there. Yeah, because there's some, like, live stuff. Uh, there's, most of it does have lyrics. I was expecting it to be pretty much all instrumental, because that's what I thought he did. I was wrong. But still really cool to have this. Uh, eh, there's my cat. Say hi. This is probably the only 
album or any anything of Ingve I'll ever get. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. I, I don't know, but really cool to have at least one of those. That wasn't really planned at all, so it was pretty cool to find that. But we actually go on to one of the CDs I was looking for, and it's actually another Steve Vai. This is an instrumental one for once, uh, but it's actually Passion to Warfare, the album I was looking for. Uh, for some reason, the the uh, the case or everything is is this way. It's like vertical. Even the track listing on the back is. So it's really weird. But this is this is the his most popular album, basically. Passion and Warfare. Songs on here I like. This was much better than the other one with Devin Townsend. But songs on here I liked. Uh, the second track, Erotic Nightmares, is really cool. The third track, The Animal, is also very good. And then his big song, big. I'm gonna put that in quotation marks down here for the love of god track seven that's the reason i wanted this album because i've heard that song it's really good really good instrumental and then the last song on here i liked was this next one the audience is listening which is set up like uh, a young child him as like an elementary schooler playing guitar and then he just goes nuts on the guitar and the teacher starts screaming it's pretty funny actually but overall uh much better than the other one i think this is the only one of the only other one of steve Vai i'll probably get uh I did have an old coworker tell me about one other album. I may pick it up. We'll see. I don't know. Still really cool, though. Then we go on to some more popular bands, definitely. And uh, this first one, I actually picked up two albums because they were super cheap at the store. It's actually Kansas. I didn't really expect to ever buy any of their albums, but I kept being told that these are both really good. Uh, it's Left Overture and Point of No Return. Uh, just for reference, Carry On Wayward Sons on this, and, and Dust in the Wind is on this one. We'll start off actually with Point of No Return. Uh, it's probably the one I like the least, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, it's still very good, very proggy. It's like early prog, it's great. Uh, but the title track, Point of No Return, is really good. Uh, portrait, uh, the Spider, which is an intro to Portrait He Knew, which is a song about Albert Einstein, actually, which is pretty cool. And then uh, Closet Chronicles. Um, Dust in the Wind, obviously Dust in the Wind is fantastic, uh, Sparks of the Tempest, and Nobody's Home are really, really good. Um, really cool album. I, I was a little disappointed by this one after having heard Left Overture. Left Overture came out of nowhere. This album is amazing. <laughs> like, there is not a bad song on this album. Every single song, Carry On, Wayward Son, The Wall, What's On My Mind, Miracles Out of Nowhere, Opus Insert, Questions of My Childhood, Cheyenne Anthem, and then the last song, Magnum Opus. Um, these last two are just live tracks. Um, very, very good. Definitely super prog. Like prog from 1975, 76. Yeah, this, this album is phenomenal. Came out of nowhere. I love it. Um, honestly, if Point of No Return would have been better, I would probably be buying more Kansas albums. But very, very, very good album. I highly suggest this album. It's really, really good. Then we go on to another band that I would call kind of classic-y. I mean, they have a new album coming out, but it's actually Tool. I finally picked up another Tool album. Uh, this is their second album, Anima. I believe it's, or is it Anima? A Anima? Anima? I don't know. Uh, I love this cover. It's trippy as heck. Uh, plus, I guess the entire album's do uh, dedicated to Bill Hicks, the uh, comedian who had died just shortly before that. But um, I will say, uh, unfortunately, yeah, track listing isn't on the back. It isn't anywhere. But um, I will say I think I liked Lateralist better. But the three songs that particularly uh, I liked a lot were uh, Stink Fist, 46 and 2, and the title track, Enema. Uh, really, really good. Um, I did enjoy it, though. It was fun. I really like Maynard James Keenan's vocal style. I really do like that. And uh, just another future hint, you'll be seeing more Tool in the next uh, CD collection video. Definitely. Actually, the rest of Tool. I probably shouldn't say that, but it's whatever. And then we go on to actually, I guess you could call this a CD upgrade. Uh, I probably didn't need to put this here. I probably could have explained this part first. But I found this at the store for like $4. And I'm like, well, technically my version of this doesn't even have the case anymore. Four bucks for the case and some extra stuff is pretty cool. And it's actually uh, Meteora by Linkin Park. Um, this is actually the entire album plus the making of DVD. Um, I didn't listen to this one, but it, this, uh, this album has Somewhere I Belong, uh, Easier to Run Faint, 
Breaking the Habit and Numb on it. So it's like, this was the first album of theirs I ever had. I got this in like, when I originally had it, I think I got it in middle school, like sixth grade or something like that. So this album's really important to me. Uh, honestly, the first two Linkin Park albums are actually hugely influential to me. I wouldn't be into the music I was I would I listen to now if it weren't for these guys. One of yeah, that's they're one of the big ones. Uh, really cool to have this though because it's an extra thing. Plus now I now I actually have the case, so I gave Crystal the the disc, so she just has the uh, other my original Meteora disc. But still really cool to have this. And then finally to close out the classic or not. Prog, whatever stuff, is uh, Metallica. Uh, like, uh, there's really no other introduction I can give them. Uh, I actually have two of them, and this is great because it kind of spans their entire discography. We have their very first album, Kill 'Em All, and their newest album, Hardwired to Self Destruct. Now, originally, I just wanted to get Kill 'Em All through the Black album, but my girlfriend found Hardwired in like the bargain bin for like two dollars, and it's a two disc album. So I'm like, okay, you know what, I've heard good enough things about it to just pick it up. So I did, and it, it, it surprised me a little bit. I think I'm actually going to start with Kill 'Em All, though, for this one, because I didn't really, uh, this didn't really impress me too much. Um, I, didn't, I completely forgot how punk influenced they were, how this early album is super, super punky. Like, it's not even really thrash. There's some thrash riffs. But it, it didn't really impress me, and I just realized that the whole I, uh, I recased this, and I stuck the track thing in upside down, so I have to fix that real quick. Um, but uh, the only song in here that really I really like is "Seek and Destroy." Uh, otherwise, nothing particularly interests me. But really cool to have this piece of history because now the only one I'm missing is uh, "Injustice," which uh, hint hint I I may have gotten this month, so. <laughs> We'll see. And then, like I said, we also got the newest album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Now, this is a two-disc album. Uh, so I, I didn't know what to, quite what to expect from this, but, uh, you know, there were actually some pretty good songs on here. Uh, on the first disc, Atlas Rise, one of the singles, uh, Now That We're Dead, uh, Halo on Fire, yeah, those three were pretty good. And then on the second disc, it was just um, Here Comes Revenge, and spit out the bone. Um, but otherwise, it's actually, it was decent. It was a lot better than I was honestly expecting. Now, like I said, the only one I'm missing is Anjustice. I do want to try to get maybe Death Magnetic at some point if I can get it for cheap enough. Uh, but we'll see. And that's it. I'm not going to get Load, Reload, or St. Anger. I don't care. St. Anger I will never buy. If I get it for free, eh, I probably still would, like, sell it. <laughs> so, um, really cool. Really cool to have this. It's actually all the band members, like, all morphed together on the cover here. Um, but still really, really cool to have. I'm really glad I, I got this, actually, because people were telling me it's a lot better than people think, and I heard good things about it, so it was really cool to get. All right, then we actually go on to the main chunk here, and just forewarning, it looks like there's one, two prog power bands from this year, and yeah, just two prog power CDs for once, just two. Um, a lot of these bands have played Prog Power before, but they aren't playing this next year. First, we'll start off with a Poets of the Fall album. I got this a while ago. This was actually the first album I got for this video. Um, I wanted to get another one of theirs. I think I had the extra money, so I just picked it up. It's actually their first one, Signs of Life. Uh, this is their first album from 2005. I didn't quite know what to expect from this one, because I really like their second album, Carnival of Rust, and then... The one after that, Revolution Roulette, was all right. That one surprised me. It was better than I expected. And then their newer stuff is is hit or miss, kind of. Uh, their new album is really good, but this was this was better than I expected. Uh, songs on here I like. The first track here, Lift, is one of their best songs. I love it. Uh, Overboard, Late Goodbye, which is the theme of Max Payne 2. Yeah, they've done music for Max Payne, Alan Wake, both Alan Wakes, actually. Then uh, Stay, track 6. Uh, seek You Out, Everything Fades, uh, Illusion and Dream, yeah. Those are the good songs on here. Um, still not quite as good as Carnival of Rust, but it was the first album of theirs I heard. Um, but I'm still really glad to have this, because again, I never thought I'd be able to see them live. I never thought I'd buy their CDs. Um, I'm only missing two, uh, Temple of Thought and Twilight Theater, and Twilight Theater is going to be a pain in the butt to get, because apparently it's a bit pricey. But it's the one of the ones I want the most because it's the one I, the other CD I heard all the way through. 
but I'll still get it. It'll probably be the last one I get, but still really cool to have this. I'm really, I can't wait to hear these guys at Prog Power. Moving on for a couple CDs of uh, non-Prog Power bands. We'll actually go on to uh, our last instrumental disc as well. It's actually the first liquid tension experiment. Now, part of me thinks I probably should have put this disc later in this stack of CDs, considering it's the uh, ex-drummer and guitarist for Dream, Dream Theater, uh, and keyboardist, excuse me, uh, before he was in the band, and then Tony Levin from King Crimson and stuff, I think. Uh, it's an instrumental prog metal album, I, I, but I just wanted to put it here because it's, it's instrumental, and a lot of people don't really listen to instrumental stuff. So, really cool, but this is probably the best instrumental album I've ever heard. Uh, every song in here is good. Paradigm Shift, Osmosis, Kindred Spirits, The Stretch, Freedom of Speech, Chris and Kevin's Excellent Adventure, State of Grace, Universal Mind, and then tracks 9 through 13 comprise a song called Three Minute Warning, which in unironically is 28 minutes long, 28 and a half. But very, very good, very, very, very musician, just very, very good musicianship. These guys are amazing at what they do. I mean, this is from 98. They do have one other one as Liquid Tension, and then one more as uh, without Petrucci called Liquid Trio Experiment. I do want to get those. Again, I found this at the CD store. I wasn't expecting to find this, so really, really cool. Uh, not a lot to say, considering it's instrumental, but really, really cool. I actually really like this cover. It's really trippy. I like it a lot, though. Then another CD I got at the CD store, and another one I wasn't expecting to find, because if you've seen my Spin the Wheel of CDs video, I actually spun this, and it was too expensive for me to buy at the time. But I was able to find it, and I was happy because I've been wanting to listen to this band for a long time. My dad really likes them. They played Prog Power. It's actually Vandenplas, if you've heard of them. This is their uh, album from 2010, so it's not their newest one. I think it's like three albums back now, but it's called The Seraphic Clockwork. Uh, seraphic, or whatever. But Seraphic, Seraphic, uh, it's basically uh, it's angelic. Isn't it? it's, it's kind of a... Um, What's the word when it, it it means something else? It's like in the presence of angels or something like that. Um, I don't remember, but it basically this album is actually I found out it's a concept album about an alternate future in which Jesus wasn't crucified on the cross and how evil basically won because he wasn't. Uh, this band, I guess they're more religious than I thought. Uh, most prog metal bands are like atheist, so really weird to hear that, but, uh, I mean, it wasn't, like, weird, like, bad weird, I'm over-explaining, sorry, but, anyway, this was actually a phenomenal album, I have been wanting to hear a whole album with these guys, I've heard bits and pieces back a long time ago on, like, Pandora, back when people used that, I mean, people still do, but back when it was more popular, I heard some other stuff of theirs, and I've actually heard a song off of this album, I don't remember where, um, but I've heard a song, I'll point it out, but there isn't a bad song on this album. Uh, you know, Frequency, Holes in the Sky, which is the song I'd heard. That song is great. Um, Scar of an Angel, Sound of Blood, The Final Murder, Quicksilver, Rush of Silence, uh, On My Way to Jerusalem, which is almost 13 minutes long, and then the bonus track, Elison, or El Elison. All very, very good. I'll have to definitely try to find more of these guys. Um, there's one album in particular I want. Might go for that first, but we'll see. Really, really happy to have this. Really cool. Moving on, we have the other prog power band, and it's actually the headliner on Thursday night. It's actually Evergrey's new album, The Atlantic. I didn't know what to expect from this album either. I mean, I kind of did because I knew what the concept is. Um, just to be quick about it, the lead singer split up with his wife. So this is a pretty emotionally heavy album. Um, I love this cover. It actually looks like a cross between their last two, The Storm Within and Hymns for the Broken. Uh, it has the color of hymns, but the style of, of Storm Within. Um, but I will say right now, this this might be my favorite Evergrey album that I've heard. And I haven't heard all of them. There's still like four, four or five I haven't heard, but I've heard all the big ones. And I've heard their most recent two before this. Um, I need to go back and listen to their older stuff, because that's what everybody likes. But I still think this is my favorite one. Not a bad song on here either. A Silent Arc. Weightless, All I Have, A Secret Atlantis, The Title, End of Silence, Currents, Departure, The Beacon, and The Ocean. All very, very good. Very, very emotional. Uh, Tom England, the singer, is one of the most emotional singers in just his voice that I've ever heard. So, very, very cool to have this. Um, 
I don't know, this is a really this is a really heavy album, so if you know the context of what this is about, it's a little bit of a difficult listen, but still very, very good. Really cool to have. I'm happy to have this. Uh, I can't wait to buy more of these guys because I want to try to finish their discography before I see them at Prog Power. Uh, there's not a lot left either, so but really cool, really, really cool. Then we go on to a band that uh, I didn't, another one I didn't really expect to find at the CD store I went to. I actually found two of them, and it's actually Iced Earth. It's a band I haven't listened to in a while, but it's Iced Earth. We have their, I believe this is their fourth album, The Dark Saga, and then uh, I don't know which album this is. It's a much later album, but this is Framing Armageddon, Something Wicked Part 1. We'll start with this one, The Dark Saga. Uh, this is actually a concept album about Spawn, the comic book character, because this, this drawing is actually by Todd McFarlane on the front there. So, really, really cool. I, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, okay, this is going to be a fun album. And it has Matt Barlow, uh, the singer that essentially made them popular. I was expecting it to be good, and it was definitely better than Burnt Offerings, but uh, let's see, songs on here I liked. Died For You, uh, track two. Um, the Hunter, track four. The Last Laugh, track five. And then, uh, oh yeah, Vengeance Is Mine, track seven. And then The Suffering, A Question of Heaven, the third part particularly, even though I guess it's all one song, but they, this, the last part is really good. Um, a little bit disappointed by their style with Matt Barlow, but I, I, I like their the newer album I have, uh, Dystopia. I really like that one. And then this one was, was better than uh, Burn Offerings. But that's all I had up to this point. But, but, but... Then I listened to this album, uh, Framing Armageddon, Something Wicked Part 1. This is actually their first album with Ripper Owens, the guy that replaced Rob Halford and Judas Priest. Oh my god, that guy can sing. Oh my god, this album blew me away. Not a bad song on this album. Uh, this is actually a full concept album, part one of a full concept album, based on some tracks from the album after, no, two albums after Dark Saga, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Uh, it actually expands upon those songs. So I was like, okay, this could be interesting. So I listened to it and I was like, holy hell, this whole album is amazing. Yes, there's 19 tracks, there's a lot of instrumentals, but every song on this album is good. I'll go through all of them, I guess, real quick. Overture, Something Wicked Part 1, Invasion, Motivation of Man, Cetian Massacre, uh, Charge to Keep, Reflections, 10,000 Strong, Execution, Order of the Rose, Cataclysm, The Clouding, Infiltrate and Assimilate, Retribution Through the Ages, Something Wicked Part 2, the Domino Decree, Framing Armageddon, When Stars Collide, Born Is He, and The Awakening. Very, very good album. I actually enjoyed it so much that, surprise, surprise, I went out and bought the second part, The Crucible of Man, Something Wicked Part 2, which is the return of Matt Barlow, uh, because they Ripper Owens either left or Matt Barlow wanted back. This is the only other album he did with him. Uh, Matt Barlow, he left after this one. Um, and actually, this one disappointed me just a little bit. It was still very, very good. Um, but it wasn't as good as that. It wasn't... Yeah, like, Ripper Owens is the best singer they've had. Um, but songs on here I really liked. Uh, In Sacred Flames and Behold the Wicked Child, the first two tracks. Uh, Crown of the Fallen and the Dimension Gauntlet. Uh, Minions of the Watch and the Revealing were very good. Uh, I Walk Alone... Harbinger of Fate, Sacrificial Kingdoms, uh, Divide, Devour, and Come What May. So there were there were only a few that I didn't really quite like, but still a very, very good album. And uh, just a quick overview of what this album series, or this set of albums is about. It's basically in part one, uh, it's the original inhabitants of Earth are called the Sechians. Uh They get invaded by the human race. Uh, all but a thousand or ten thousand of them are slaughtered. And they basically make a plan to infiltrate the human race to destroy them from within because they can make human forms. So what they do is they make somehow make, through something called the clouding, they make the human race, I'm going way too much detail into this, make the human race forget everything about themselves, infiltrate, and then basically influence human society and all this other stuff up to a point where their, uh, their messiah uh, is born at the end of this part who is there to save the race. And then in part two, he basically does stuff like he influences, like he creates all religion and causes a, uh, like a, as religion does, 
divides us. He just divides the human race so that we can't get along and can't reach our true potential. He basically kills Jesus for having what's called the sight. The, it's, it, it's complicated. But, uh, and at the end, there's actually a positive message saying if we can't change, something like this is going to happen, which is actually a really good message. But, you know, yeah, I went a little bit of a tangent there. And, and that's not the whole thing. Look it up. Just look up. Look up the something wicked uh, iced earth and uh, the, the whole story is kind of complicated. Plus he adds on to it even after this on certain songs off of that dystopia album and the next album after that. So it's, it's, it, it gets a little bit complicated, but still really cool to have those. Uh, wasn't expecting to find those. Plus wasn't expecting such a good album there. <clears throat> really good. Then we go on to, honestly, one of my favorite bands, and this actually, I guess, in a sense, completes their discography for me of what I want, because it's the one live album I wanted, because I've heard it's really good. It's actually Symphony X and their Live on the Edge of Forever album from 2001. Yeah, so this is quite old, but I've heard really good things about it. It basically has songs from, uh, I think it's Divine Wings of Tragedy, because I actually do the title track. Um... It's Divine Wings of Tragedy, Twilight and Olympus, and uh, the New Mythology Suite. That's it. But it's a uh, it's a two disc album. Really, really good. Uh, Russell Allen sounds phenomenal on this. Uh, musically, the mix isn't great, but Russ sounds really, really good. Um, I don't have that much to say about it because it's just a live album. But it's Symphony X. That's why it's so late in here. Really good live album though for the time. I and. These guys did, did just come back and announce some new live dates finally, so <laughs> maybe we can get a new one soon. I don't know. We'll see. Then we go on to another CD that I wasn't quite expecting to find, and it's a band I never really thought I'd get more CDs of, but I might have to start collecting more of them now that I heard this one. They're a lot better. Like These guys were a meme for a long time, and they're a lot better than they let on. Their live shows weren't great for the longest time, but I have seen them live before, and they do a good job now, so they definitely picked up their live show. But it's actually Dragon Force, and this is their album, The Sonic Firestorm, which was, though we, the, I believe this is the album before Inhuman Rampage, so before they got famous. But this album, very, very good. Um, it does have Fury of the Storm, which is one of their big songs. Um, but other songs on here I like. My, My Spirit Will Go On, Fury of the Storm, obviously, Fields of Despair, Soldiers of the Wasteland, and Once in a Lifetime. All very good. They're long. Uh, the shortest song on here is 5 minutes and 12 seconds. <laughs> Otherwise it's longer. So I like this cover. It's like a meteor thing. Really, really cool to have this. Uh, yes, it is ridiculous. You know, shreddy, insanely fast power metal. Uh, with their original singer, really, really cool to have. I'm only missing three albums now. And uh, I guess we'll go hint, hint again. I picked up one. Yeah, really, really happy to have this. It's definitely surprised me more. I just keep forgetting that I enjoy their music as much as they do. They definitely have really fun to sing along choruses. That's that's the big thing for me. That's why I like them so much. Really, really cool to have, though. I am definitely glad to hear, have this. Then we go on to another CD I wasn't expecting to pick up at uh, the CD store. It's actually a Devin Townsend Project album. This is the second one. This is Key or Kai. Uh, I'll take the... This, take it out of the slipcase. Uh, this is the actual cover, and it's actually upside down. That's just how it is, but it says Devin Townsend Project Kai or Key or whatever. Didn't know quite what to expect from this. Uh, after listening to it, I will say the, the his later albums are better, and that probably a lot of people are going to disagree with. This is another one I actually spun on the Wheel of CDs. I just realized that. Oh, wow, look at that trippy back. Um, but uh, you're not really going to be able to read the track listing too good on here. But the songs I liked, there were only four because the first one has an intro. But it's A Monday and Coast, very good, very groovy. Heaven Sent and, uh, or Heaven Sent, excuse me. And the title track, Key or Kai, whatever you want to call it. Very, very good. I really, a uh, little bit disappointing, I guess, in a sense. But I'm still going to buy the rest of him. Plus, he has a new album coming out this month. So we'll be getting that because I've heard bits and pieces and it's really good. And what really makes me mad is it has a CD, the CD sticky thing on the the slipcase. And if you try to take this off, I'll show you here. It actually peels the stuff. So I can't take this off. And that makes me really angry. But really cool to have this. Another one I wasn't quite expecting to find. Really, really cool. It actually has the drummer for uh, this old school drummer for from the Temptations and Jefferson Airplane. 
and it has like all these metal moments and the guy does great but it's weird hearing like a jazz drummer you know but this is the early stuff before he had the band completely you know formed really really cool though then another cd i didn't expect to find at the cd store uh this is one i've been wanting to check out for a long time as well because i've heard really 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 good things about it i actually haven't gotten a cd from this guy Probably about three years now. It's actually Stephen Wilson and his album, The Raven That Refused to Sing and Other Stories. I've uh, heard really, really good things about this. Like, cons this is this is a concept album in a sense about, it's just a bunch of different, like, really messed up subjects. They're all really dark, but there's only six songs on it, on this, but they're all pretty long. Like, the longest is 12, and 10, 12 minutes and 10 seconds, and the shortest is 5.03. So, the First track, Luminol, is really good. The second track, Drive Home. Uh, the fourth track, The Pin Drop. Everything but The Holy Drinker. The Watchmaker and the title track, The Raven That Refused to Sing. All very, very good. This is definitely... like uh, There's a bunch of guests on here, like uh, Guthrie Govan, uh, Peter Paul Gilbert. There's a bunch of like guests on this album. You actually look up who plays on this, and you're like, whoa, okay. But... I don't know if I like this better than Hand Cannot Erase, my cat again. <laughs> I don't know if I like this better than Hand Cannot Erase, but still a very, very good album. I mean, it's it's definitely uh, less tracks, but they're longer and more filling, I guess. Really, really cool. I love this, this cover as well. Um, really cool. I'll have to get more of him. I need to get some Porcupine Tree. Hint, hint, I may have got an album. But anyway, really cool to have. Then we go on to one of the only, well, actually, yeah, next to next to the final CD here and the first CD we heard or saw, uh, The Poets of the Fall, this is one of the only not uh, CD store CDs that I picked up. And it's actually a CD I've been waiting a little while for. I went and saw these guys in Germany when I went to Wacken. It's the reason I went, actually. It's Avantasia or Avantasia. It's Tobias Samets or whatever, but it's Avantasia, Avantasia, whatever. It's their new album, Moon Glow. Didn't know what to expect coming into this. I knew some of the guest singers, so I was like, this is going to be fun. Did not expect it to probably be my favorite album of theirs. I have to go back through and listen to them. But every song on here is good. Ghost in the Moon, Book of Shallows, Moon Glow, The Raven Child, Starlight, Invincible, Alchemy, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, Lavender, uh, Requiem from a Dream, and the last track here is a cover of Maniac, you know, she's a maniac, maniac on the... Yeah, sorry. Oh, it's actually called Moon Glow, the narratives of a misplaced entity, apparently. But, uh, very, very good album. Guests on here, obviously it's by Tobias Samet from Ed Guy, but Hansi Kursk, or Kirsch from uh, Blind Guardian, Ronnie Atkins from Pretty Maze, Jordland from his own stuff and Master Plan, Mille Petroza from Creator... Uh, Candace Knight from her own thing, Jeff Tate, as in Jeff Tate from Queensryche, Eric Martin from Mr. Big, Bob Catley, who's been in Arion and other Avantasia, and then Michael Kisk, who's famous for, you know, Place Vendome and Halloween, best voice ever, but um, really, really good album. Uh, this cover is apparently uh, inspired by Tim Burton stuff, and that makes sense. But really, really, really good album. I This one also was... I was just sitting there going, wow, for a lot of this. So, really, really cool. I'm really happy to have this one uh, up there for album of the month, honestly. This and probably Something Wicked, uh, part one, probably. <laughs> and Left Overture. Then we go on to a pretty big prog metal band. Uh, and the only album of theirs that I was missing... Uh, it's Fate's Warning, and this is Inside Out. Uh, you can't really see it unless you flip it over that way. You can see Inside Out. Um, but still really cool. Or, that's actually really cool. Uh, basically, the album that follows Parallels, which really disappointed me. This album was a little bit better, I guess. Still not their best. Another band I feel like got better with age. Everything passed, like... A Pleasant Shade of Grey is really, really good for me. But a lot of people like their older stuff, but I'm different. I'm edgy. No, I'm not. Anyway, but uh, songs on here I liked. Uh, basically, uh, Pale Fire, the second track, and then uh, Inward Bound and Monument, which Inward Bound is an instrumental opening to Monument. That's it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't remember how many uh, parallels of songs I liked, but 
I would say it sounded a little bit better, but it, it is their attempt to sound a little more mainstream and modern um, and straightforward. It's not so proggy, but it's still like a little cool thing to have. A lot of people like this one too. I don't quite get it, but it is what it is. Really cool to have though. It's the only one I was missing. So, I mean, maybe, maybe I'll get the very first Ray Alder one, no exit, but I got, I have perfect symmetry, which is the one after that. And I didn't particularly like that one. So I don't know if I want to get it, but maybe just to have all the Ray Alders. I'm not a big fan of John Arch. That's apparently blasphemy, but I don't care. Really cool though. Really cool to have this. Almost done. We got two more CDs. The next one is actually a band I honestly for the longest time never thought I'd buy an album of, but then they went full like 70s prog and I'm like, okay, I'll give them a chance. It's actually Opeth and this is their album from 2008, 2014, excuse me. It's the one before their most recent one. Uh, this is Pale Communion, uh, full on prog. Um, wasn't too impressed with it. I love I love Michael Ackerfell or Mikhail or whatever. I love his vocal style though, but just musically it was super slow and super bland. <laughs> like it wasn't like anything special to me, but um, Cusp of Eternity, the second track is good. Uh, Elysian Wars or Elysian, Elysian Woes uh, track f four and then River track six are good. Otherwise it was pretty, it was okay. Um, there are a couple of their other proggy ones. I think there's two, three more that I want to get. And again, hint, hint, I may have picked up one of them. But really cool to have an Opeth finally. You know, it's it's whatever. A lot of people don't like new Opeth. Uh, I don't like Death Growls, so I still prefer this. And then finally, our last CD here. And it's actually a CD I told myself for the longest time I would never buy. But there's something I want to do uh, here in the future that required me to get it. It is actually the very first Dream Theater album, When Dream and Day Unite. Before James Labrie joined the band, before they became popular, yeah, you're, I had to replace the case because it was all broken. That's why uh, this obviously was meant for like one of those black, uh, where instead of clear here, it's black. Um, but I didn't really have a, a choice. But... Um, I'll get to why I got this but in a second, but the only songs in here I particularly like are the instrumental, the Yitz Jam, or Yitz, I don't know how to pronounce it, great instrumental, and then Afterlife is very good. Otherwise, I'm not a big fan of their original singer, um, Charlie Dominici. Uh, I do prefer Dr Dr uh, James Labrie. Um, now, the reason I got this finally is because I kind of want to do a video of me ranking every single Dream Theater album from worst to best and they did just have an album come out in February and it will be in the next video because I did buy it um, so once I listen to that I'm gonna go back through and listen to every album again uh, now mind you I might have to listen to them more than once or more than that because there's a couple albums I haven't listened to a lot but I just feel like it would be fun because they're the reason I listen to this music. It, like this was my gateway band to like prog and power metal, even though they are prog, obviously. But the, I just I've always wanted to to do some sort of video of me ranking them because I have some pretty, I guess you could say, controversial opinions about some of their albums. Um, I, it is going to be probably a full scripted video. Uh, I'm going to get some help because I can't write worth a crap. But uh, I have a lot I want to say. But so expect that within the next couple months probably um but it's still really cool i told myself i wouldn't ever buy this because i didn't like it for the longest time uh, again it's not that great but it's a little piece of history to have it's from 1989 so really cool um that's 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 the cd collection um like i said expect that that's that uh best dream theater or rank definitive not really definitive but ranking of dream theater albums here soon uh, and by soon, I mean, I have no idea. Um, but, yes, that is it for my CD collection for January and February of 2019. Up next, we're actually going to do DVDs and Blu-rays. And then our last video will be video games. And Crystal will be back for those. So, enjoy. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next part later. Mm -hmm.